So this is the first prototype of the SOK server rack lithium iron phosphate battery. So first off, 48 volt battery, 100 amp hours. So it does 5.12 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. Next, it's white. All the other ones are black and that's pretty cool. I think it looks pretty nice. Next, they're using a totally different terminal than all the other server rack batteries. And they seem stronger and a lot of the other ones have cheap plastic that can break, but these are more exposed, so that might be a potential downside. But what's nice is you can fit large conductors. Um, the smaller ones have a limit. When I put two watt gauge cables on the jack up here, um, it doesn't like to fit that well. Now this display and the BMS inside is the same that's inside the jack up here, but they're gonna flash it with their own firmware and change some of these display options and make it easier to use. Next, we have five communication ports, RS-485A, CAN bus, RS-232, RS-485B, and RS-485C. So if you want to use this to communicate with like a Solar converter, a GrowWatt, or an MPP, they're going to ensure that this works with all of those. Then we have an on and off button, run, alarm, state of charge indicator, everything else that you typically have on a server rack battery. On this side, we have the main circuit breaker where you turn it on. Now before we tear into this, I want to talk about the pre-charge resistor and how to use it. This allows you to charge up the capacitors and avoid a massive amount of inrush current when connecting these batteries to large inverters. So first you need to flip the breaker off and then you use a small screwdriver to press this RST button until it turns off. Next you want to connect the inverter to this battery and then you flip the circuit breaker on and then you use a small screwdriver to turn everything back on again. And as it turns on, it's going to run the pre-charge resistor circuit. And this will allow the capacitors in the inverter that you connected to be charged up safely. If not, you can cause permanent damage to this battery or any other battery out there. And that's it, you just turn it off, connect your inverter, and then turn it back on again with this little button. So that's enough talking, let's actually open this thing up. Now check this out, this is the first server rack battery that is user serviceable friendly. Everything you can take apart, there is no laser welded nothing. And these are the same cells that they use in the SOK 100 amp hour battery. So first off we have the main positive and the main negative. In the main negative, this is first cell and positive. Second cell positive, third cell positive, and they are all labeled. Next, you'll notice that this is a similar design to other SOK batteries. We have a metal bar for the balance lead. And this bar holds the cells in place and it also has a hole for every single overpressure relief valve. Now here's a temperature sensor. There's four of them and they're actually gonna be using a potted ring terminal. Um, this is the first prototype, so they told me that they did not connect these yet. Next, they're using plastic to separate these cells and these look very similar to the EG4 battery. Now on this side, we have 10 copper bus bars for the main terminals. Next, this BMS can handle 100 amps in and 100 amps out. We actually tested this yesterday. We used it to charge up a Tesla and we pulled 104 amps for about 20 or 30 minutes. And everyone is using this BMS. Seplos, Jack up here, EG4, um, this one, Energy Tech, lots and lots of battery companies are using this. And I think other batteries should use this as well because it has lots of good features. It has current regulation, multiple temperature sensors, you can program it, and it has communication. So this thing's fantastic. And the circuit breaker is deep inside and it's crimped with some ferrule connections. Now these terminals are exposed, but it's not going to be like this on the production model. On the production model, they're going to have plastic covers over everything. Now we're going to take apart this battery and see if I can put it back together again. So first off, we need to turn off the BMS by disconnecting this lead. Then I disconnected the balance leads from the BMS board. Next, we're going to remove these screw terminals and the bus bars. You gotta be very careful when you're working around battery terminals, just so you know. If you plan to do this at home, ensure that the battery is discharged and then it will be at a safe voltage to handle. Batteries are very dangerous to work with, just so you guys remember. And these bus bars are very flexible and you can see all of the layers. They tighten these down pretty tight. So that was a tedious 10 minutes. Now we're gonna remove this balance lead and the bar that supports the cells. Oh, look at this. So this is a metal box that holds all of the cells. It's not just a support bar like I thought it was. And to access the cells, we need to remove these screws. These cells are in here pretty good. I thought it'd be easier than this. 
Now let's compare this to the EG4. That battery only uses green straps. This actually has a metal box to fixate these cells. And this costs a lot more to make. Like this is pretty nice. All right, let's take this thing. Oh, wow. Look at that. How neat is that, guys? Whoever designed that, that is awesome. All right. Oh, oh wow. They are just floating in there. Look at this. So here are the cells. Notice how small these are for 100 amp hours. Just a few years ago, Kelb cells or Sinopolis were massive for 100 amp hour, but look at this, this is so tiny. These are the plastic pieces between the cells. So if you ever have a bad cell or you wanna swap out the cells, you can easily do so. And yeah, none of them are held in place. They are held together with the box or fixated, I should say. Actually, if you messed up the threads on one of these terminals, you could remove it and replace it with a new cell. That is a nice design. So I was having trouble putting the cage back on, but this was upside down. So make sure these squares are at the bottom. Yep. I like their designs. Every single SOK battery has such a simple but super strong design. Now these cables can get pinched, so use the screwdriver when you're putting this in here. So now we need to add the bus bars, but be sure to know which are the main terminals and work up from there. So this is the main negative and the main positive. So we're gonna put a bus bar right here, right here, right here, and all the way through. And I'm just gonna hand tighten them and then go through here and retorque them later. You should probably use a torque wrench and find out the spec for these cells. I'm gonna ask them to post it on their website because you really don't wanna over tighten these. When you damage these, you're gonna have a bad day. Now before you connect the balance cables, you need to ensure that every single lead is on its corresponding cell. If not, you will damage this VMS, so be very careful. Positive, 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 eight, seven, six, five, four. Also, these are labeled, so we have one, two, three, and four. So you have to plug those in, in the right order on the board. Now that everything's connected, we can turn on the VMS. And it's on. Now let's test out these temperature sensors to see if it has low temp charging protection. This thing was supposed to be 60 volts and I can only get 51 volts, so it won't charge this battery. So let me go get another charger. So now we're charging with a 48 volt charger. We have some ice cold water. Oh, look at that. And look at that, it just turned back on again. All right, let's try another one. And it works, look at that. God, that is so cool. I've never seen one of these VMSs fail that test ever. Whew. You need to be careful when you put this cover back on because these bus bars are right here and right here, so be very careful. Probably the most dangerous part of this whole assembly process is the cover. This is an SOK 100 amp hour battery, but with a new BMS and a server rack metal box. That's pretty much it, very simple. Now what I like about SOK is they have high quality control standards. Um, it's very low drama when it comes to user experience. People get the batteries and they just work. Every product they have has very simple, strong designs with high quality components that they build themselves. Um, all of those BMSs on their original batteries are their own BMS. And they had like, what, two failures out of tens of thousands of batteries. So that's really nice. There's lots of other battery companies that use other people's BMS. For server rack batteries, everyone's using this BMS and I love it because it's a fantastic BMS. Now they're gonna sell this battery for pre-order if you wanna buy it, but it's gonna take like a month or two to get here. But they plan to make a lot of these and so do a lot of other companies. Right now every server rack battery on the market is being sold out so everything's on pre-order still but the shipments are actually coming in now so that's a relief. And that's all I can think about with this battery. Very simple design and it's an SOK. So yeah please let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and I will talk to you later. Bye.